Hello, this is a recording on performing simple linear regression in JUMP. Prior to watching the video, you should have read the instructor notes on simple linear regression and watch the other two assigned videos that are in the module. Again, simple linear regression is an attempt to build a model in which we have a continuous explanatory or input variable that potentially predicts or explains variation in a continuous response. And we've studied something similar called one-way analysis of variance or one-way ANOVA. In one-way ANOVA we have a continuous response but the input or explanatory variable is nominal. So the difference between ANOVA and regression is that in regression the potential explanatory variables or input variables are continuous and we're going to illustrate one how to do a simple linear regression in jump and I'll actually show you the difference between uh, ANOVA and regression. Again it all depends upon how the input variable X is defined. If it's continuous and the response is continuous, we do regression. If the input variable is nominal and the response is continuous, it's called ANOVA. So this is data called hardwood and this is a designed study to measure the impact on tensile strength of the brown paper that's used to make shopping bags and obviously you don't want the bags ripping out on you. And what's being studied is the percent hardwood that's in the pulp used to make the paper versus the tensile strength of the paper as measured by pounds per square inch. In other words, how much force did it take to rip the bag? And for illustration, I've created a nominal variable called level. Because uh, level is nominal, there is no sense of a continuous scale of measurement of percent hardwood. There's just four different categories. Also notice there are six replicates for each level of hardwood. So again, a, a design study. So they had four levels of percent hardwood and they had replicates and the replicates allow us to assess the amount of random variation that goes on. Uh, very similar in, a, in ANOVA where we had replicates within each of the groups. So first I'm going to go to the analyze menu and pick fit y by x because again I'm comparing two columns and fit y by x will do the right analysis depending upon how x and y are defined. So I'm going to put, I'm sorry there is a mistake here, percent hardwood if you look to the left in the columns window should be continuous. Not sure why it is not but it should be. So go to analyze fit y by x percent hardwood is x the input factor and PSI is the response. And Jump says we're going to do what's called bivariate analysis and basically what it's going to do is regression. So click OK. So then we get the scatter plot of the data. Okay. And when we go to fit a line it's very easy in fit Y by X. So if you don't see bivariate then that would mean that your input variable is incorrect. So you may have to go back and change percent hardwood to continuous, which it really is. So I, in the main report menu to the left of bivariate, just pick fit line. So jump is fit a line to the data. The slope of the line is about 0.7 and that says for every percent hardwood you add to the, for every percent hardwood you add, you go off about 0.7 PSI in tensile strength. Also notice the intercept is about 7.25 PSI, so that says if there's 0% hardwood, 
then the model predicts that the tensile strength will be about 7.25. Be careful because the intercept term in a regression model often has no physical interpretation and is, is really an extrapolation beyond the data. So the lowest run we have is percent hardwood at 5. So the intercept of 0.725 is sheer extrapolation. We don't know if it's valid or not. Okay. So that gives us some idea of the fit. And then you'll notice you get a new menu called linear fit. I'll click on that uh, report menu. And we're given a lot of options. One of them uh, that I want to look at is called plot residuals. Remember, residuals are the difference between what you actually observed and what our model predicts. So in a residual plot, if our model fits the actual pattern of the data, these residual plots should be random. There should be no structure to them because this represents the randomness or noise in the data. So in our residual plot, there's really no obvious pattern. And as a hint, don't go looking for trouble as an old expression that we use. And as we look through these, if you're concerned about the normal assumption, that is we assume that the response is normally distributed. Again, you should read the um, simple linear regression notes. We do a normal quantile plot. And as you can see, it's very close to a straight line. Therefore, we're going to go ahead and assume that the response is normally distributed. Now, finally, how do we use this model in practice? Well, I'm going to go to the cursor menu and grab the crosshair tool. Well, what happens, what the line is doing, the fitted line, it is giving us the predicted average for any range of percent hardwood. So if I go to say 10, I'm going to click with the crosshair tool and I'm at about 10, as close as I can get. And it predicts on average, if we have 10% hardwood, we'll average about 14.3 PSI. Remember, the model predicts on average. We do not want to predict every observation precisely because those observations have noise in them. And it's useless to build a model to predict noise because you try to use the model on other data, the noise will not be the same. <clears throat> What's nice is since x is continuous, we can extrapolate. So suppose I use 7.5% hardwood, the model predicts about 12.4 PSI. So you can interpolate with a regression model. That is, we can say what might happen on average between the values we actually use to fit the model. So if we had 17.5% hardwood, we predict about 19.5 uh, PSI. The key is do never try to extrapolate these models beyond the range of data you use to fit them. But keep in mind that you can interpolate as long as the model fits and our linear or straight line model seems to fit perfectly fine. And again, from below, we know the slope and the intercept of that line. Now there's another option in here, and this is called the confidence curves for the fit. And I'm going to use the shaded version. Remember, our model predicts on average what the response will be. It's not trying to tell you what every value you observe might be. It's saying on average, here's what the response will be. Well, just like when we try to predict the mean using the sample average, We've got one observation, one model, one prediction.
So what jump does, it'll and using math that's used in simple linear regression, again it's not really in our scope to get into detail, it gives you a confidence interval. So again I'm going to grab the crosshair tool and I'll go to let's pick 12 and a half. So I'll get as close to 12 and a half as I can. So at 12 and a half we're predicting around uh, 16 PSI, a little less. So right around 16 PSI, but that's an estimate. What the bands tell us, the actual mean could be anywhere from about 15 to about 17. Okay. So that's our best estimate of where the actual mean might fall. So that's called a confidence curve for the fit or a confidence interval for the mean. And the mean of PSI clearly depends upon the setting of hardwood. So there's a relationship between hardwood and PSI. Well, there's another option in the linear fit menu, and that's called confidence uh, curves for individuals. Okay, What this curve does, and this is usually what's most important to the uh, analyst looking at the data, it's not, it's no longer giving you an interval for where the true mean might lie for a given setting of X. It's saying for a given setting of X, what is the range of individual measurements you might see? That's why they're called confidence curves for individuals. So again, I'll pick 12 and a half. Okay, so I'll get as close as 12 and a half as I can get. So it's saying at 12 and a half PSI, we may go from, let me get that again for you, about 12 and a half PSI, we might see actual tensile strengths from about 10.4. up to about 12 and a half. So quite a range. Well, there's a lot of variation in the data. So if you're someone running this process, you'd say, all right, if we run at 12 and a half percent hardwood, I could have some runs in which the paper strength is as low as 10.3, 10.4. Is that of concern? If it is, then you'd have to consider going to higher PSI. So these confidence curves for individuals can be very, very useful and I find in general they're more uh, of interest to the actual analysts or the uh, experimenters or the people doing the study than the confidence curves for the mean or fit. And finally what I wanted to illustrate is what if I had treated hardwood as a nominal variable. So I'm going to use my variable nominal level. So I go to fit y by x. This time x is nominal and psi is the response. And not say, jump says, well now we're going to do one-way analysis because x is no longer continuous. So notice the display has changed, the scatter plot and the options. So when we do ANOVA, all we're interested in is does changing levels of X shift the response up or down? There is no concept of a continuous relationship. So there is no such thing as interpolation. Okay. So what we find from ANOVA is that the low and saturated are significantly different well, medium and medium high or not. However, from the correct analysis, simple linear regression, we know that there is a continuous relationship, so medium and medium high actually are different in their response. And finally, I'm going to show one more example. And this illustrates what happens if we try to fit a line, a straight line, but it's not the right model. In other words, X and Y are not 
um, linear related. This is a data set called Chemical Kinetics, and it's a study of how quickly these um, microbes are eating a carbon source provided to them. So velocity is a rate at which they're uptaking or eating the carbon source, and concentration is how much carbon was put in the food that they were given. Like this may be glucose, which would have a lot of carbon in it. So I'm going to go to Analyze, Fit Y by X, Concentration is X, and Velocity, or the uptake rate, is Y. Notice from looking at the plot, it doesn't really look like a straight line is going to fit this, but for illustration, I'll go ahead and fit a line. And then in the Linear Fit menu, let's look at the residual plot. Okay. As you can see in the residual plot, whoops, there's a bit of a curve to it. And it's obvious this is not the correct model. So I'm going to try a different model. So I go to fit polynomial and I'll fit a second order model. So this model the second one I fit has two terms in it. Okay. It has a linear term in concentration and a squared term in concentration. Okay. Seems to fit a little better. Again, we'll look at our fit menu for polynomial fit and plot the residuals and you can see it fits a little better. Okay. By the way, the relationship between the concentration of substrate and the uptake in biology they use something called the Michaelis-Menten equation which is nonlinear and in fact our polynomial, our second order polynomial is the best we can do. There are other types of fitting we could try which are beyond the scope of this course but clearly the second order polynomial is a better fit and there are cases, unfortunately, where a simple linear regression type model may not work. Okay, so this gives you an idea of what to, what happens when there is a nonlinear relationship, and our first order model will not work. And I'll also show you in the fit menu. You can save predicteds just illustrating this for you and save residuals and they will just add columns to the data table that can be used. Okay, So that concludes our discussion of how to do simple linear regression and jump. It's straightforward and you should uh, have read the notes in addition to have watched the video.